their formation lap then for the fourth round of Porsche Carrera Cup GB. They raced this morning, they started on a dry circuit, it got damper, we had cars slithering off the road and it was red flagged and so we had a restart over five minutes. But I have to say, this feels a little bit like being at the Spa 24 hours. Lots of Porsches, headlights on, a very wet road uh, and an undulating circuit as well. And Peter Kyle Henney, Mark Radcliffe and Nigel Rice next. Peter Mangum and Hugo Ellis then will round out the grid. A word about Hugo Ellis, who was utterly dominant in Pro-Am in the dry part of the earlier race. And when we went back on track in the wet for the five-minute restart, five minutes, that's all, off he went and sadly ends up last on this grid, having failed to finish. Well, all part of the learning experience Indeed. is what I'd say, David. But, yeah, he, was, he showed some fantastic pace. He was a contender for pole position in the dry, which shows uh, some real pace. Uh, but now the circuit is wetter than it's been at any stage of the day. This is full wet conditions. Uh, these cars are a handful, 500 plus horsepower, no ABS, no traction control, um, some very sticky, wet Michelin tyres, I grant you, but with a partially reversed grid, the person at the front, and that's Theo Edgerton, the reigning um, Cayman Sprint uh, champion from last year, who moved up to this, has a great advantage. And just to finish off that little point, we'll see the Caymans rather than the uh, Carrera Cup GB cars at Thruxton uh, in a couple of weeks' time. So Theo Edgerton, it is on pole position. Matty Graham, though, with that penalty, yeah. lost a crucial seven points in the championship and the championship lead. So watch out for that black car on the fifth row to charge forward. Adam Smalley, who's also been a race winner this year, had a spin in the dry uh, segment of the race, and that threw away points on his behalf as well. But in these conditions, if you survive, you could finish pretty well. So it's about not making mistakes. 34 laps or 30 minutes, depending on which comes first. And therefore, if we were to get a safety car period or if the rain really comes down heavily and lap times go up, we'd go to the time rather than the number of laps. But this promises to be a really interesting race as to who can cope with the conditions the best. Round four of Porsche Carrera Cup Great Britain, Theo Edgerton and Will Aspin on the front row of the grid. The lights will go out to get the race underway after a long hold now. And a slow start made by Jack Bartholomew, a good start by Will Martin and a demon getaway by Keon Dewis in the silver car there who comes charging up to the outside of Theo Edgerton. And Keon Dewis started fifth, he's second going into paddock. There's loads of spray being kicked up and Keon Dewis is really on his toes though as he goes for the race lead against Theo Edgerton into Druids. Can't do it on the way in. Can't do it on the way out. Now that was a really good start. When you get the car hooked up and it drives forward like that, well, it's just a case of momentum charging you forward. Don't get on this outside curb. That Will Aspin been forced out there by uh, Will Will Martin. Well, yes, it was Will Martin pushing out. Well, oh no, look, Theo Edgerton's gone straight on. He's going to have to rejoin safely on the exit. He might be in the lead still, but he does get back on track. He did that in race one for the restart on his way to the grid, and he does still lead. He made that lap rather shorter, but he's going to have to give up a place because he did gain an advantage out of that. So Keon Dewis goes through, takes over the race lead, but that shows you just how treacherous it is. Look, he finds the puddle. He just can't get the car turned in. No, just carried too much speed in. And, I mean, in actual fact, the, the penalty doesn't really fit the crime because no. he's only lost one position there. The good news is he's still in the race, and in fact everybody is still in the race despite the weather conditions being absolutely horrible. The cars don't work now. Lap two, and it's Keon Dewis, the race leader. Edgerton is second, Gus Burton is third. Will Martin, who was really impressive in the first race, both in the dry when he had an easier time of it, in the wet when he was under huge pressure from Dewis. He runs fourth, fifth is Jack Bartholomew, and Adam Smorty is sixth. Where is Matt Graham? He is currently in eighth place. There, 89, that's Jack Bartholomew. 
Now, all of these cars are new into the championship this year. It's the very latest iteration of the 911 GT3 Cup. There are drivers with 911 experience, but of course, it's a whole new car to everybody on the grid now. Yeah, the exact same car that races at Grand Prix in the International Super Cup as Will Martin gets out very wide on the slippery curbs on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend, but uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. I've had the privilege of testing it, and it's uh, quite a step up from the uh, old generation of 991. It feels more like a, a GT Le Mans car. You mentioned Spa, and it, it wouldn't be out of place there. No, true. Championship runs with a pro, a pro-am and an am class. Let's look at a replay at the start. Now, look on the left of your screen, third row back, Key and Jewis in the silver car. Brilliant start, just lights it up, weaves his way through the traffic. Absolutely fantastic. He was helped a little bit by Jack Bartholomew making a poor start on his left, which certainly opened up a gap for him. One car bogged down towards the back there. Uh, gets by. That was Seb Morris, I fear. I think you're right. Yeah, he's had a terrible weekend with an accident in qualifying that resulted in uh, Team Parker and Road and Race, the team that do all the chassis repairs in the pit lanes, up until 3.30 in the morning to repair that car. But uh, a great job they, they all did, but Seb not making the best start there, obviously. Now, Theo Edgerton is trying to fight back after his rally crossing here of a couple of laps ago. In the drying qualifying, they were lapping at 45 seconds. At the moment, it's north of 50, which shows you that the circuit conditions, of course, are worse, but it's not going to get any better in the short term, I rather fear. Variety of lines coming off Clark Kerr, but Kean Jewis leads the way. He was a real gun in single-seater racing before coming into Carrera Cup, winning in the F4 and then F3 championships in this country, and he's away by two seconds now. Yeah, and a winner last year against uh, the quality of opposition of Dan Kamish and Harry King, but difficult start to his year, not scoring any points in the first race at um, Donington Park, so he's very much on catch-up points-wise, isn't he? He is indeed. He was the rookie champion, though, of Carrera Cup last year. And yes, he knows about racing Porsches now, but of course then you reset for this new car. You can see how wet it is with those tram lines through the water coming down the hill. But in fairness, with the exception of Edgerton's little drama, they're being respectful of these conditions and these very powerful cars. Lap 5 of 34 we're on now. Yeah, Jewis really is away at the front. Uh, gap is going to be two seconds, but the battle for second place is really hotting up, I think. An incident, uh, sorry, sorry. I was going to say, an incident involving car 54 will be looked at after the race. 54 is Theo Edgerton. Now, you said about the penalty and the crime not necessarily being compatible because he only really gave up one place, and that's going to be looked at. Yeah, I'm not sure quite how they'll rule on that, but really, to short circuit by the circuit the track by that much, yeah. missing out, you know, a good 150, 200 yards, and rejoin only losing one place, there'd be many arguing that probably isn't appropriate. Ah, oh, but I needed to do that to rejoin safely, not getting anyone to where you're on and there's a that's a good argument as well <laughs> <laughs> so downhill comes the mid pack the race order is key and jewis ahead of theo edgerton gus burson runs third will martin is fourth fifth now adam smalley you're looking at 77 which is charles bateman he's 15th overall and fifth in the pro-am class pro-am is being led by will aspin who had a win earlier on in the day and the am is josh stanton looking for four in a row yeah, that'll be quite something. A great demonstration of the power of the grip coming out of Druids from Charlie Bateman with a big opposite lock moment that we caught beautifully on camera. He held it very well, I must say. Charles Bateman returning to Porsche racing after a few seasons away. Came from catering to Porsches to British GT, but after a few years' absence, he's back in Carrera Cup GB, celebrating his 20th anniversary season this year. Downhill, they turn once more there in number 10. Will Martin, absolute standout driver in the earlier race, brilliant drive to control it no matter what was thrown at him, but he's got Adam Smalley, Ginetta champion, closing up now onto his tail, and of course Adam Smalley, the Porsche Junior for the next two seasons. Yeah, that's a wonderful situation to be in, Porsche Junior, £85,000 and all the support from Porsche that goes with being the junior driver. Um, last two years that's been Harry King, who of course has gone on to Benelux and Super Cup success internationally, so it's a wonderful position to be in. Um, and uh, he's making maximum use of it, is Adam Smalley, a winner already this year at Donington. But, uh, yeah, we just saw Will Martin on that last lap out of this next corner. Druids have a big slide, which allowed Smalley onto the back of him. They all seem to be struggling, getting the power down coming out of there. Harry King making for good viewing, I it must is, say. Yes, yes. There's Matty Graham on the back, you can see of Will Aspin.
Harry King here this weekend doing driver coaching for Team Parker Racing, but saying it feels really strange coming into this paddock without my overalls and helmet, just my little backpack. He said, I've done Ginetta Juniors, the senior Ginettas, two years of Carrera Cup GB, and here I am with nothing to race. It feels really odd. Matty Graham, another welcome return. He dives at the inside of Will Aspin, goes through. That gives him a place outright, and it brings him nearer to the pro category opposition, assuming he can stay ahead off Clark Kerr, which he can as Aspin gets sideways. It's a good move because these cars do prefer the outside line there where there's a bit more grip and you need less steering angle to come off the corner so you can use a bit more throttle but uh, he managed to make the, the dive and the lunge and come off the corner well at, at the same time. So Will Aspin, the Italian horn, Brick drops back overall but still leads the Pro-Am section of the race. The leading Am remains Josh Stanton. Number two, they're going through. Oliver White, new to Porsches this year. Very, very good around here in Formula Ford 1600s, but adapting to a very different type of race car. Yeah, a hugely different race car. Formula Ford car, a narrow, light, single-seater on treaded tyres, jumping into this. I mean, he's a hugely skilled driver, but it just shows how difficult the adaptation is for someone to uh, just jump in one of these cars and go around. You're looking at the fight for second in Pro-Am here. Brian Ratcliffe versus Charles Rainford. They have a good fight earlier on in the day. They come up over the line. Brian Ratcliffe goes through the Welshman, keeping Charles Rainford at bay for the moment. But Charles Rainford there in the blue and silver and red car, looking very committed indeed. Charles Rainford, good in modern Porsches, good in historic sports cars and saloon cars as well. Doesn't commit to the inside of Druids. Thought about it, thought better of it. Yeah, always remembering the radiators at the front of these cars are particularly vulnerable. Oh, I love this slide. These are great. You don't want cars with traction control, do you? This, this is the way they should be. Real seat of the pants driving. Um, but yeah, you've still got to watch those radiators at the front. So in the gathering gloom with the spray hanging in the air, Kian Jewis is now four and a half seconds ahead of Theo Edgerton. Gus Burson third as their Charles Bateman turns through. And he, sorry, Charles Rainford, I should say, turns through. He is in 10th place, chasing after Ryan Ratcliffe and the margin between them has just crept up air, but so slightly on that lap. But in terms of race pace, nobody can do anything about Jewis, and that is Justin Sherwood off the road. Now, he has made a habit of winning the AM Championship over the last few seasons, and the former British Formula 3 Championship racer gets it wrong, coming out of 30s into McLaren and off onto the grass. Yeah, it's going to cost him some time. Leader Kian Jewis, though, has really jumped ahead right from the get-go, and... Uh, using a slightly different line there interestingly but it's his pace has got the fastest lap of the race um, extra point for that which is always nice especially in his situation where he's trying to fight back and that is adam smalley i think who's just got himself up past will martin for fourth place it is so the duckham to answer with red line racing entry there it is and adam smalley moves through up into fourth place goes ahead of the race one winner will martin but yes kian jewis up front you've got to say he seems to love these conditions because he excelled in the damp earlier on in the day and now in fully wet conditions no one can hold a candle to him no he's in a different class at the moment but he's got to keep his concentration up it's one thing uh, establishing that lead but you've got a long way to go and you are literally on the edge of your reflexes all the time here these cars are very quick even in these conditions um, and uh, he does need to keep his concentration there the cars actually qualifying in the dry were nearly a second quicker than last year i know there's been some resurfacing which has helped with the grip in a couple of corners but they were nine tenths quicker than last year which is a huge chunk and they look great i mean they're big cars but they sound fantastic and the response from drivers has been beaming smiles and they absolutely love them you see that swan neck style rear wing the uh, anchor points from the top so that because the underside of the rear wing does the hard work that's not affected by any supports it the, the, the anchoring points if you like the supports come over the top of the wing good battle on here between the wills martin versus aspin and behind look ratcliffe versus rainford uh, in fact i tell you what i jack bartholomew battling with will aspin and he will go through will he on the inside he will so jack bartholomew goes by now so bartholomew new to this championship but we saw him in the sprint challenge in the Caymans last season former Lamborghini race and former single seater race and he does move through goes ahead of Will Aspin for seventh overall great racing by Will Aspin in the blue car remember he's a pro-am category driver and he's battling with very well established pro drivers but now he has got the pro-am class right with him 
so by being shuffled back in the pack. Look, there's contact behind us, Ratcliffe and Rainford get together, but now we've got the three leading Pro-Am cars together. Will Aspin needs now to try and build the gap up once more. Getting out of the way of the pros is all well and good, but it reduces that cushion, gets rid of the buffer between him and the class opposition. Ron Ratcliffe there looking the white and black and yellow car. He's an experienced GT racer, not just from Carrera Cup, but the old Blanc Pan Endurance Series, British GT, Bentleys and the like. So he knows what he's doing in this style of car. Yeah, very much so. And uh, adapted well as a lunge down the inside for Charles Rainford. Does he get the car stopped or does he go out onto the slippery curbs? He's back comes from Ratcliffe up the inside. That's the danger. You slice up the inside going down the hill, but you can't stop the car. So the positions ebb and flow. So one up and one back for Charles Rainford, and now he's on the attack once more. The door is prized ajar. Can he get the power down to level with Ratcliffe? He's got the inside line, but the outside grippier line claimed by Ratcliffe. So the Welshman hangs on to the place. Up towards the line they come. More and more spray hanging in the air. Fair play to all the drivers, he says, tempting fate, because with 14 of 34 laps done, We've had relatively few dramas in this, but we have had some good racing. We are, but we're not even halfway at home. So still a long way to go in this race. Brooks, little error being made there. That was Seb Morris again, wasn't it? Running out of road up at yeah. Druids. Trying to turn around his weekend. The Chester driver battles on. Hugo Ellis from the back of the grid is up into 15th place, incidentally. And there, another place about to be gained by Will Martin against Gus Burton. So Will Martin will go through, Adam Smalley has gone by as well, so Burton's lost two places on that lap. Yeah, so I guess uh, somewhere along the, the line, um, Smalley opened the door and uh, it was Gus Burton dropping two places. Indeed so, so once you are forced off line, you lose momentum, he tries to fight back against Will Martin, another of the drivers that's come out of Janetta Racing, and there to the outside line goes Gus Burton, the reigning GT4 champion within British GT. And he has come into this championship new this year, as has the team, Century Motorsport. That's from a BMW with a co-driver to a Porsche on your own. It's a different discipline. Now, this is the second place. Fair play to Adam Smalley, because as the race wears on, he's getting closer and closer to the front, isn't he? Chipping his way up the order, as you say. We're not yet quite at half distance. And there he is on the tail of the second place man, Theo Edgerton. Yeah, at this stage of the race, he looks like he's got a fair bit more grip. He jumped up quickly yeah. after passing Gus Burton onto the back of Theo Edgerton's car. And maybe he just looked after his tyres a little bit better or the pressures were slightly softer or lower at the start of the race and they've come in later in the race. But uh, he's certainly got a quick car underneath him now. Trouble is, he's got also seven seconds and a bit to make up against the leader, Kean Jewis, who's looked absolute dynamite in these conditions. And there, Smalley finds it's hard to get past Edgerton. The door is closed as they round Druids, and he's sideways coming down the hill. Great to watch, but it doesn't help his quest to take second place because he loses a length. Yeah, straight away, and you uh, overwork the tyres as well. You've really got to drive to the grip. Uh, of course, it may be academic because if Edgerton gets a penalty afterwards, um, then it would be academic, but yeah. he, you know, he, he doesn't know that, he's got to fight and, and Edgerton's got to defend because he doesn't know either. Oh, so close to the edge of the road while the car wheel spins and snakes its way out. And equally, if he can clear Edgerton, he might be able to go after Key and Jewett, then it would be an interesting fight to see what that margin would be. And in fact, it's come down by a couple of tenths, first to third on that lap from 7.3 to 7.1. So actually, if Smalley can go past Edgerton, and he will do at Druid, he might be able to close on the leader by the end. Goes through, goes wide, goes deep. Edgerton comes back on the inside, but the road will come to the yellow-fronted car of Adam Smalley at the next corner because they'll look through on the inside line. He goes, great racing this. Yeah, they're so close together in tricky circumstances. Edgerton gives him a flash of the light, so I'm not sure that's going to do anything. If I was Edgerton, I'd be looking in my mirror because got Will Martin now arriving very quickly. He's another one, late race, getting on with the programme, so to speak. His pace quickening. In fact, Will Martin's done uh, a personal best lap last time around. So lap times are starting to come from some. Let's have a look at uh, Nathan Harrison here, making his move against Josh Stanton. That's Pro-Am passing Am going into Paddock. Yeah, big move from Josh. 
Now, the lead situation is 6.6 .6 seconds Jewis to Smalley. Two laps ago, it was 7.3. This could be game on. Adam Smalley now, with a quick car underneath him, as Tim has been saying, is most definitely closing on the race leader. Or Jewis is just managing that gap and looking after his tyres. What, what would really help is a little safety car. Now, it's a quick safety car. With, uh, Obviously, give Smalley a, a chance of getting on the back of Jewis, but we'll watch the times and see if it's a case of managing the race or really whether the, the pace of Smalley is enough to close up that gap. Well, let's see then, because it was a 53 1 last time from Kia Jewis, plays 52.6 seconds for the lap by Adam Smalley, and the margin this time is down again, so another six tenths pulled back by Adam Smalley as Will Martin lines up to try to make a move against Theo Edgerton now. There are also back markers that will be negotiated relatively shortly as well. So, Kean Jewis will be the pioneer not only in terms of the track surface but also getting through the traffic. Well, we're starting to slide it out just a little bit more now. The, uh, the tyres, I'm sure, have probably had the edges, the sharp edges. They all start with brand new tyres every wet race, but I'm sure the edges will be worn off a little bit now. And a big, big spin there, Peter Mangi at the back marker gets it wrong. Thankfully, doesn't go into the gravel. Thankfully, doesn't get in anybody's way. But Peter Mangian's Toro Verde GT entry suddenly got away from him. Off he spins. Kian Jewis goes through unaffected. His pace a little quicker at a 52.9. Adam Smalley, 5.6 seconds back. Here's the replay. Peter Mangian was being chased by Justin Sherwood. Loses the back of the car and around it goes. Yeah, a bit too much brakes on the rear and quite possibly looking for the faster cars to come through. Now, Smalley down the hill, there, Peter Carl Henney and Justin Sherwood, back markers, there, the battle for third, Theo Edgerton versus Will Martin, that I suspect is going to change before the end. But lap by lap, Smalley is closing on the race, leader Edgerton has got to pick his way through the traffic, Peter Carl Henney very gentlemanly gets out of the way. Will Martin commits to the inside, does he? Yes, he does. Theo Edgerton has to give him racing room and then gets stuck behind Justin Sherwood. So Will Martin has done it. Oh, that was great. I mean, uh, it, Adam Smalley uh, got through very easily on those two back markers, but uh, Will Martin played a blinder there because he could see that um, Theo Edgerton was going to get blocked in on the outside. That was a really good, intelligent, quick thinking pass. There it is again. He goes up the inside, uh, he gets Edgerton stuck uh, behind uh, Sherwood on the outside, he doesn't come off the corner quite as quickly, uh, fair enough, he's an amateur, not a pro, and uh, through goes Will Martin. Great move, that, exactly how one or two people treat that gnome that overtakes you in the middle lane, yeah. and you block him in behind the next van. So, job done, and Will Martin goes third, the lead gap is down to 5.6 seconds, this is the race leader, this is Kean Jewis. Now, he might be driving within himself, but certainly the gap has been coming down over the last few laps. That is a 52.7, as his previous lap was. He's now settling into a rhythm at that kind of lap time. Adam Smalley goes through, 5.4 seconds, so only a tenth and a bit pull back. The incremental gains, not as great. And that is Will Aspin off the road, and that could bring out your safety car. Yeah, and it looked like there was just a tiny bit of contact at the wrong time. We'll see a, a replay of that, but Kia Juice will be gutted if a safety car comes out. So, we are on lap 23 of 34, 12 laps to go. The race officials will have a look at where that car has come to rest, how easy it can be to move it from the Paddock Hill gravel. And Kian Jewis, for the moment at least, all he can do is press on, try and maintain that advantage. And we are going to go safety car, so the lead gap will disappear and they will all bunch up. I can't tell you how annoying that is, as well as a, a driver having done all the hard work to see it eventually. And, you know, he's still got nine laps to go. He's got a long way to uh, uh, protect this lead when we do restart. So here we are. There is their contact. Will Aspin just ahead of Ryan Ratcliffe. In fact, it was coming up towards Clearways, wasn't it? Ratcliffe on the inside. Aspin on the out. And... Yeah, Ratcliffe just used the... He slid out. I mean, he, he used the exit of the road. He gets on the power, but Aspin is sort of... Harsh, it's only the tiniest touch there, look, that it just fires Aspen off the road. Well, the net result of all of that is that Will Aspen's car is in an awkward place. Jake Giddings also, while that was going on, got around the outside of Oliver White. So safety car deployed. Uh, 
and yes, it's really coming into Clark Curl where it's ended up. So, safety car boards, yellow flags are there, and Kean Jewis, his heart sinking, turns into Paddock Hill Bend. A uh, chance to just cool the tyres a, a fraction and uh, have a little think about it. Uh, the safety car has not picked up the race leader, but does have the provision, of course, to let the rogue cars go by. So the race order is Kean Jewis ahead of Adam Smalley, uh, then Will Martin third, Theo Edgerton fourth, with this Damocletian investigation, of course, post-race fifth. Uh, Gus Burton and sixth, Matty Graham, Jack Bartholomew, seventh, Charles Rainford is now the Pro-Am leader, Seb Morris up into ninth, that's been a good recovery from the tough start, yeah. and then tenth, uh, Ryan Ratcliffe. Yeah, and obviously, again, a bit of a more opportunity, look, the back markers are now being waved through, so that uh, the safety car will then pick up Kian Juice as the leader, and the back markers will go around and rejoin the back of the crocodile, and uh, Kian Juice is now behind the safety car. So the correct order is now formed, and uh, there is Will Aspin's car out of the gravel. The good news is, from where it is, he can just drive it straight across the road into the pit lane, and then the road's pretty much clear, so it shouldn't take too long, one would hope, to get things back yeah. underway. Hopefully not, although the team will not be happy about all the stones going through the discs, the gravel, the drive belts or anything else, but... Uh, no option really other than to have lifted the car which would have taken quite a long time so the team park at entry coasts down the pit lane and that is Will Aspin out of the race the snatch vehicle now the little recovery truck goes across the gravel back to its uh, access gate and Key and Jewis might get one more safety car lap here it's going to be close the lights aren't out in time so there's one more lap yeah and also they're still waiting for the back markers to catch up a little bit more behind the, the the, the back of the crocodile, so I expect the safety car will go a little bit slower on this lap just to allow them to catch back up. But it's been a good weekend for Will Aspin, you know, that was a oh. great result in race one and he's showed really good pace and run with some front cars. That was just an unfortunate touch at the wrong moment that sent him off, but uh, bodes well for the rest of this year. So, eight laps or six minutes change on the clock, so it could be that we end up looking more at the time than the number of laps. While we are behind the safety car, we're lapping at uh, well over a minute and 15 seconds. But, of course, a proper race pace will be a lot better than that. We wait for the lights to go out on top of the safety car. The back markers haven't quite caught up, but we'll be uh, up to the clock and, of course, more open to get things back underway soon. As out go the lights, so the uh, pace car, the safety car, will be in this time to get the race back underway. And Kean Jewis stacks up the pack behind him. And once he decides to accelerate, he's got to keep on going. He can't go and slow and wreak havoc. So he's got to try and time this to perfection to steal an advantage over Adam Smalley. Particularly tricky on a very wet road. But up towards clearways he comes. He's not yet accelerated, but he's about to do so as they come off Clark Curve. Go, go, go! Kean Jewis falls the throttle and tries to jump away by two lengths. Yeah, he timed that well. He slowed them all down and picked his moment to go, and the reaction time alone was enough to give him a couple of car lengths ahead. So we are racing once more with seven laps or five minutes to go. Smalley goes wide, runs out of road, up the inside line goes Will Martin. Adam Smalley on the restart throws away second place. I thought he'd gone in there a little bit quick. He was closing up rapidly on the brakes, and I thought, well, he's either uh, a demon on the brakes or he's got in too quick, but it was all he could do to hold it on the track. So breathing space behind here and Jewish now, and it's Will. Will, Will Martin that assumes the second place. Absolutely right. And Kean Jewis, again, just masters the conditions, doesn't he? He's the first one on the restart to plunge into panic. He gets it absolutely right, and he comes out with an increased advantage. So here he comes, then, up towards the end of lap 28. The clock ticking on down. Four and a half more minutes of the timed part of the race to go. There's Jack Bartholomew, number 89. I think he's dropped back on this restart lap. He looks lower down the order. Have a look at Smorty again. Yeah, just watch the closing speed to Kean Jewis. That tells me straight away. Look, look, he's catching, catching. He's gone in too fast. But he manages with all his skill to just hold it on the track and only lose one place. But I think we're going to run to time here rather than laps. I agree. And there is Matty Graham on the outside of Gus Burton going now for fifth place, but to no avail. Drop downhill once more. And he does dive up the inside here at Graham Hill Bend. That's a good move as long as he stays on the track. And he does. 
Gus Burton tries to squeeze up the inside. Matty Graham defends for all he's worth. Gus Burton back to the inside line. Matty Graham staves him off. Great defensive driving. Yeah, very good. Matty Graham just stopped the car before getting on the uh, uh, curbs on the exit of Graham Hill, but he was a little bit under threat going into 30, so he drove round the outside, left Gus Burton room, and that gave him the inside for kilways. Good, respectful racing. Absolutely right. Over the timing line they go once more. So Matty Graham up into fifth. What's going on in Pro-Am? It's still Charles Rainford ahead with Ron Ratcliffe second and Hugo Ellis third in Pro-Am from last on the grid as they shuffle through one or two more of the back markers, such as Nigel Rice, who was in the Grambling race at one, as the cars now turn out of the right-hand of Druids. So, we have got three minutes or five laps still to run, and Kean Dewis four tenths of a second ahead of Will Martin. He's not actually storming away very much. Will Martin is now looking as though he might be able to have a go for the race win, as Ratcliffe battles with Jake Giddings. They are side by side, but they're in different classes. Giddings goes ahead. the end of lap number 30. There you can see the Ratcliffe and Giddings battle. There are the overall race leaders and it's less than four tenths of a second now with two and a half minutes on the clock. Yeah, Will, Will Martin's really got his dander up now. He can sniff a double uh, with the first race. He can perhaps uh, would love to pull off a, another win here. Here Juice with desperate though to get the maximum points. But again, Will Martin, we were saying it before the safety car, how late race the car was coming alive, looking quick, catching easily. And there he is on the tail of Kean Jewis. Adam Smalley has caught back up as well, and they've dropped Theo Edgerton. So it's three for the lead. There are going to be less than two minutes to go when they cross the line, so they're going to lose probably one of the scheduled laps. Smalley goes deep at clearways, looks for the grippier line. And Will Martin itching up, creeping up onto the back of Kean Jewis for the race lead. Can he do from two from two? If he doesn't, it won't be for the one of trying. No, they've all got a good feel for these conditions now. It's just a case of who's bravest, who's got the best touch, the best feel. Jackie Stewart used to say, you know, you need to drive like you've got an egg underneath the pedals and you're pressing so gently. And he's absolutely right. It's all about the subtle control input, steering, braking and accelerating. And there's a sideways Will Martin. The gap had crept up anyway at the end of the last lap. That will not have helped his case. It brings Smalley closer to Martin than Martin is to Dewis. They run along Cooper straight now into the left-right sequence of Surtees and McLaren. And we are heading towards just about the last lap on the time. So 52.7 seconds was the lap time of the leader last time. Keep an eye to the clock, keep an eye to the time part of the race. Here comes Kean Dewis then. He might actually squeeze two more out of this because as he comes up towards the line, he breaks the beam, 56 seconds to go. We are going to get the full 34 laps. It's just going to work out. Yeah, just by a couple of seconds. So. Yeah. Good. Nice to get the full race distance in. And he's pulling away again, but the margin's gone up again to seven tenths of a second. So Kean Dewis responding late race to secure a first win of the season. Yeah, and a couple of tenths quicker than Martin on that lap. Martin, we saw the wheel speed coming off Druids and lack of full drive as a result of that. And uh, Kean Dewis has just beautifully managed his tyres, the race, no mistakes. Um, very, very nice drive. So the race leaders once more head through clearways. And a bit of a twitch there from Will Martin that brings Adam Smalley right onto his tail. Here they come out now from Clark Curve. Head up towards the timing line once more. And with now one more lap to go by two seconds, effectively, it is Kean Dewis still seven tenths clear, but he does deserve this race win because he has mastered pretty much everything that's been thrown at him. Will Martin for second, Adam Smalley for third, and the points haul from this is going to be absolutely essential for Kean Dewis after a really impressive drive. Out of Druids they come now, down the hill, head towards Graham Hill Bend. And actually for second place, we're not done yet, because Adam Smalley is under attack, or is attacking, I should say, Will Martin. Martin under attack, Smalley with a flash of the lights right there behind him, and all of that takes the pressure even further off Kean Dewis as they go towards clearways for the last time. To Clark Curve they will come, and Kean Dewis on target for victory. He makes his way now out of the corner. It is uh, going to be a win for the... Team Parker car and Kean Dewis accelerates up towards the line. Kean Dewis wins round four of Carrera Cup GB. Will Martin just hangs on to second. Adam Smalley finishes third. Theo Edgerton fourth, although to be investigated. Matty Graham fifth, Gus Burton sixth, and seventh to win in Pro Am 
Charles Rainford ahead of Jack Bartholomew, Seb Morris ninth, and Jake Giddings rounds out the top ten. The winning am should be Josh Stanton, who is on his way towards the chequered flag and comes through to make that four out of four in the am category. A great race, yeah. Flashing the lights, Kid is very pleased with uh, that result, uh, as indeed will be the team. Really, really good drive that, having to cope with the weather, having to cope with everything that was thrown at him and, of course, that safety car element to the race as well. One second was the margin at the very end, but a really impressive drive by Kian Juris. Bill Martin gave it his all, but just couldn't quite get there and, of course, ultimately had to fend off Adam Smalley, who will be ruining his little mistake that was made at the foot of Paddock Hill. So to the pit lane comes Keegan Jewis. Confirm the results in a moment and see what that has done to his championship hopes. This is a very tight competitive series and you can ill afford to give away points like he did through no fault of his own really at Donington. Race result sees Kean Jewis ahead of Will Martin, Adam Smalley third in round four of Carrera Cup GB. Theo Edgerton fourth ahead of Matty Graham and Gus Burton, with Charles Rainford seventh, Jack Bartholomew eighth, and then it's Seb Morris ahead of Jake Giddings. Charles Rainford seventh winning in Pro-Am. Oliver White 11th from Ryan Ratcliffe and Mika Stanley. Hugo Ellis last on the grid to 14th ahead of Charles Bateman, Nathan Harrison and then Angus Whiteside. 18th is the winning am, that's Josh Stanton who defeats Mark Radcliffe and Justin Sherwood in class. 21st Nigel Rice ahead of Peter Kyle Henning and Peter Mangion. And after all of the dramas in the wet conditions, we only lost one car and it was that of Will Aspin. far as the championship is concerned. It's now Kean Jewis ahead by a point from Theo Edgerton, by a point from Adam Smalley, by a point from Will Martin, by a point from Matty Graham, who drops to fifth ahead of Gus Burton and Jack Bartholomew. And the pro top ten rounded out by Seb Morris, Mika Stanley and Jake Giddings. Nathan Harrison is seven ahead of Will Aspin in Pro-Am, Ryan Ratcliffe third. And in the AMs, it's Josh Stanton ahead of Justin Sherwood and then Mark Radcliffe. Great racing from Carrera Cup GB and Kean Jewis will be a very happy race winner with a lot to tell after the break.